And uh, now Major Glenn Ignacio has experience in special operations, retired from the Air Force in that department and is a military analyst these days. Just to kind of pick up on what we were talking about uh, with Robert, we get these hostages released. Um, we had it Friday. There's two more women now, Israeli women today, uh, that apparently are, are out. And in your view, how should that or will that impact how the Israelis think about going into Gaza? Well, it's uh, like like you mentioned, we, we have a kinetic warfare, we have the information warfare. And, and with a background of deception, this is exactly what Hamas is doing. Is I, I, I believe that IDF, as they stated before, is that they're going to press with the operations with a focus on trying to get the hostages out, but that is not going to be a barrier. Now, the longer this goes on, the worse that it looks for Israel, as you see the international community turning against Israel because of the issues and the humanitarian issues in Gaza. But let me tell you is that Hamas is playing a great game, that they're caring for people. If they do two every other day, that's three months before hostages are released. But when they were gouging kids' eyes out and killing and murdering people horrifically, they are not concerned about the welfare and care of people. So this is a deception and a tactic to get the community against Israel. Should the counter from Israel be to allow more aid to get in, you know, 20 trucks, uh, then 40, you know, 60, I believe? You know, so they're not letting that much aid through uh, the Rafah crossing as maybe would, would help more people. Should the counter to that tactic be their own tactic that says, hey, listen, we, we do care about these humanitarian issues. Um, we're doing X, Y, Z. Should they do more? I believe that the, the flow of humanitarian aid needs to be considerably larger because it was on an average of 100 to 200 trucks of normally providing, right. providing supplies into Gaza. The concern is, is making sure that weapons are not hidden. That is a fact. And secondly is, yes, fuel is a consideration because anything that comes in, Hamas is going to take. They don't care about Palestinians. Like I said, it's a war against Hamas, and we all have to think about that globally. If they can get more humanitarian aid, that would be great, but it's going to have to be something that's going to be much more significant than what has been occurring. The Palestinian people are suffering, but it's at the hands of Hamas, and people need to remember that, and it's not happening globally because of the Again, the PR that the Hamas is playing is going very well. All right, the military side of it then. So there, while all of this, it's not as if Israel's just waiting and doing nothing, and quite the contrary. As I said a moment ago, hundreds of targets hit just within the last uh, 24 hours. This air assault and the artillery that's been uh, lobbed into Gaza. Uh, so does waiting as they've waited from a military perspective give them an advantage? I mean, what, what do you think they've accomplished uh, with all of this time that they've taken to, um, to really just attack Gaza in a serious way for both the air and with artillery? Yeah, it's a balance on a knife edge, and let me explain why. So the longer that they wait, even Hamas's supplies are dwindling down, but the after effect is it's affecting people. So the longer that they take, it does impact Hamas that way. The other side is Israel is getting a tremendous amount of intelligence, mm. and they are probing things to try to get more information about the hostages and exactly where the fortresses, of, or at least the fortifications from Hamas are. The problem is, is the longer you wait, we talked about the community as far as the international community, what they look at Israel. The other thing is, is their troops have to stay sharp. So the longer you wait, the more that becomes stagnant. It is a perishable skill. So I believe it's a knife edge, and I, I think that is going to happen soon. I wish I could give you an exact date. But I believe within this week is going to be the timing that something has to kick off. Otherwise, things get stale and we can't have that happen that, and let Hamas continue to attack. That's interesting from your experience. So it's a morale issue. You have know, people just, you know, the human nature that they've been waiting there for so long, they lose their edge. Is that what you're essentially saying? Yeah, I mean, they, they've got, so I call it Trinity. First of all, you got to have the military might to do so. Israel has that. They have the morale because people want to go against Hamas based on all the horrific things they did. And the third thing you have to have in that Trinity is the people backing it, and that's wavering in the international community. But yes, the longer that the troops actually stay in place and they're not able to exercise and, and, and get the uh, maneuvering down and so forth, the longer they stay in a single place, the more they become a little bit laid back. It's, it's just a a human nature. Uh, some training is going on, but when you have tanks and everything sitting in there, it gets a little stagnant. So it's just something that they have to balance and watch out for. And what about being spread too thin when the uh, war is already spread to the extent that there's been a uh, you know, number of skirmishes on the border? Maybe that's, uh, I, I think that maybe is not the right word. It's probably more serious than that on the border between Israel and, and Lebanon. We know that the you know, people have been in the streets at least, and there's been uh, all, a lot of activity at the West Bank. What about being spread too thin from the Israeli military's point of view? 
Yeah, great question. And and this is one of the things that Israel is completely surrounded by adversaries, and and they're pretty pretty well forced to, to because of that. And that's also one of the things they prepared. So the invasion of Gaza is is pretty much armed and ready to go. At the same time, to the north with uh, Hezbollah and Lebanon, they're proactively striking rockets before they're launched, and they are definitely watching the West Bank. West Bank. So they are pretty much distributed to be able to take care of that. The hard part is when they go into Gaza, they could get bogged down. That's where most of their forces are. And there's about 30,000 or so militants. Hezbollah, excuse me, Hezbollah has about 100,000. Right. So they have to be very careful of that. And that's why I believe they're being proactive. So it, they, they have the forces, but a prolonged war would be very difficult. That's why it's going to be very intense. And we call it uh, violence of action. All right. Uh, Major Glenn Ignacio, retired from Special Operations of the Air Force. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Take care and let's pray for the best answers here. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.